Hi everyone, Arjunal Page, and I'm working in this Arjunal that I made from just um, watercolor paper I had in pads, and I've started this page by a just it was a nine a inch by twelve inch, so I just took a pencil and well dissected it to <laughs> sections. Uh, each square is three by three. I just want to uh, do some circles and I wanted them placed uh, near each other. Now I'm taking this and going to put a circle inside each square. I'm not sure if you can see my lines, but they are here. As I said, every three inch, I just wanted a, a nice dispersing of the circles that's it so uh, i'm just fitting in a circle that will uh, go inside uh, the square and i could also take a compass or whatever i just i'm just starting like this and trying to put it in the center i'm using a black permanent marker and I'm just doing a circle. So I'm going to do a circle in each uh, square. And that's just the start. Let's see. So right now I'm using uh, this as a, as a template, but I want to go over each uh, circle and make it a, li a little bit more uh, loose and not precise. This is mostly for a uh, placement on the page. And I will uh, erase the lines that I have. I don't need them. It was just so I can... Uh, place each, each uh, circle so you can see what I'm doing I will do the other ones uh, later and what I want to do is just go now loosely I don't want it precise I want a very loose feel for each circle of course if you don't like this kind of uh, thing just stay with the symmetrical shape so that's the start I'm going to do the other circles and I'll come back Okay, so I've got my, my circles and I want to play with some watercolors. This is the easiest technique that ever uh, was for watercolors. You don't need to be an expert and I'm certainly not an expert. I'm just taking a brush and loading it with water. And now I'm going on the inside of the circle like this. And now I'm going to take a, the color that I want from my watercolors and let's go with this, I don't know, rust. <laughs> and I'm just putting it in and wherever it goes, it goes. I'm taking another color just for a more interest so it won't be a solid color. And I don't even care if it goes out of the circle. I can also take a little bit out of it if I want to. And just want a little bit darker here. So I'm adding a little bit more. Like so. And now I want contrast uh, for this color. And I'm reaching for this, I don't know, dark turquoise, what to call it and again just a little bit and i'm letting it blend and wherever it goes it goes i don't care just letting it be and i'm uh, going for another circle 
and I'm going to do this uh, the same I don't know color combination just in this I want to spread them I don't want again I don't want a symmetrical I don't want to repeat the same color at the same place so I'm just going to play with it same thing I've done now here I haven't put a uh, down watercolor before but you can do it and then it spreads by itself that's why it's the easiest a uh, technique with watercolors that I know that's what I said <laughs> this needs a little bit more okay so let's do something else I'm picking this color I don't even remember a uh, the names it's an old uh, watercolor kit I have it for three decades it's by Pelican and I'm not sure they're doing it making them anymore so I've got this color I need water as you can see some just fell here again really not concerned about it it's going to be very loose oh, this whole thing adding a little bit of this ochre uh, paint color whatever <laughs> I'm losing my words today I need to concentrate more so just picked another blue just for the contrast and let's do one here I'm forgetting to put the water it's better if I put the water first then it just spreads better a little bit of this just so I will have variation and now a little bit of the blue too much pigment so I'm I just washed my brush and I'm trying to take a little bit of the water so I can lift most of the color something like that and as you can see the it travels wherever it travels and that's the fun of it at least for me <laughs> not everyone <laughs> likes it that you don't uh, that you can't control watercolors so just picking another circle and I'm continuing with the browns and I don't know whatever goes goes I think here I will add a little bit from the rust and not the ochre and let's pick another blue so you can see what I'm doing I'm just playing with the colors that I have nothing more okay another circle the same as this one putting down the water just for variation and once again so you see what I'm doing and it's just having fun so going to continue with this uh, I'm going to do the whole circles and then I'll come back okay so 
finished with the circles now I want to add some details to it and I've picked this stencil this sticky stencil and again I'm going to spread this uh, randomly I'm taking a makeup sponge with black acrylic paint just dabbing the excess and I'm going to add this to my circle I'm going lightly I don't need it to be too prominent like this uh, you can also use stamps in that's what you like and let's see let's put one uh, don't overthink it <laughs> okay so I'm, I'm putting one here I want to uh, do all kinds again like playing with the colors on the circles now I want to play with the pattern that I'm adding to each circle yeah so just going for another one let's see I'm moving this a little bit to the side before I'm making a mess and just adding this one here it would probably have taken a less time if I used stamps with a stamp pad but I like it so just continuing spreading it and we'll see where it gets me yeah you see it's a little bit faded I'm not pushing the makeup sponge I just uh, tap it lightly let's pick another one maybe this one why not let's go with this picked up a little bit too much paint never mind I can live with it Yeah, let's do, I don't know, <laughs> I'm just playing. Okay, so I'm taking one here. next so you see what I'm doing and after I'm finished adding a little bit of uh, this stuff to each circle I'm going to uh, do some black splatter and then we'll move on to my focal point which I already have one not colored but I want to show you how to make something like this so I'm going to continue and then I'll come back okay so next splatter I'm taking a fan brush with water and just going into the black paint acrylic paint I've got here and just splattering away wherever it goes it goes just not on the next page <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I should make a, a more noticeable a line around the circles I'm not sure yet right now I will leave it as is we'll see after the focal point so moving this aside this needs to dry 
and we are going to do the focal point so that's my focal point and as always I'm when I'm doing something like this I'm starting with tracing paper it allows me to do the planning correction and erasing if I don't like it so and of course I when I want it for a certain page then I check the size that I want but when I I like something like this then I will scan it to my computer and then I will play with the sizes and print all kinds and of course that uh, if you have a scanner and if you can do uh, things like that so how did I start first it doesn't matter which kind of <laughs> flower you want to do I start with a basic shape with a graphic shape and I started with a cup a shape like this and then I went like this with a curvy uh, line next I went with another petal like this it's very basic and when you have this you can elaborate later and then I decided that I want two petals in the back of course if I didn't like it I can always erase it and decide I want I don't know three petals in the back and if I feel it's too flat or too I don't know chubby I can go and fix it another way uh, the tracing paper is great is that you can always take another one or fold it you can still see the start of what you have and then you can work on what you don't like if it's too squishy and I want to elongate it then I will go like this and I still have what I have I can see what I have under like so so this is the start and then when I have the basic shape then I will take a permanent a marker and then I will start doing the lines like this and that's just because I like it it's just a way that I like to do it it's how do I call it each one has is its own um, way to do things even a if I show you how I make mine it will never look the same with someone else and it will never look the same as the one that I've did before you see each time I will have something else and that's the fun of it and the stem and so on and so on so that's how I go about it and you can practice and you can make your own style so I've got my flower that I want uh, to color but first off I think I need more lines it's not enough it was great for a start what I've done here this is a photocopy I have printed it on a, on Bristol paper that is thicker than just printer paper so because I knew I wanted to color it with something wet like acrylic paint or watercolors and so I needed something thicker in terms of paper
and this is just uh, something from the cheap store it's for CDs <laughs> and DVDs to write upon <laughs> don't know who uses CDs anymore but it's a great uh, permanent marker and maybe a little bit here yeah I like this squibbly line so I'm just adding to it okay so color I didn't think what color do I want for my uh, flower I'm going to take this kit now this one was ordered from Aliexpress there is no a uh, brand I just did a search for a watercolor kit and picked the one I liked so <laughs> that's all I have to say about it and let's see let's start with the stem and I'm going with this olive color and I'm starting with a darker color I'm not again I'm not uh, trying to be precise there is nothing here to be precise about it's that's the whole thing it's very loose just putting in when I want it a little, not so concentrated I just add water and spread it around And I can always come back and add more if I want to. Like so. Okay, so what color do I go with the flower? I'm thinking something yellowish. Let's try this one. I'm putting this a uh, this is something between yellow and ochre and right now I'm putting it where the, in the areas that I think needs to be darker and I will add something else maybe let's go with gold what the heck I'm going with gold not that you will be able to see that's just a shame anything a pearlescent metallic uh, with with some shine it just doesn't show in uh, in the video too much trying to spread it and I think I need to add something so it would be in several areas darker mm, let's see Again, this is uh, just me playing. Yeah, I think we'll like it. Yeah. So now for the joys of fussy cutting, I will uh, turn off and be back later. And as I said, I'll be back. <laughs> And I'm back and here is my flower now I don't know if you can see but when I fussy cut I leave like a hairline of white I don't try anymore to be precise I like it like this and I think it just adds 
something to the whole thing when I leave a, a little bit of white like a highlight so it is fussy cutting but without the frustration <laughs> so I'm just putting some glue on, in the back and I want it I think here yeah and yes I know it looks like it's floating in the middle of on the page not in the middle <laughs> but now I am taking this word hope and I don't know why but that's how it looks to me like it needs to be here no rhyme or reason that's just how I thought it should look and I'm just taking the same permanent marker and just adding again a little bit of a loose lines just to go with the rest of this page and this is it that's my page i hope you liked it and thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments down below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now